give you glory, to give you the honor that is due your name, Father. Lord, we believe you today for mighty things, God. Father, we sense a mighty move of your spirit in this room that will transform lives all across this country and come in contact with this message and with this presence. You are mighty beyond words, God, and we honor you, and we glorify you today. We seek your face, and we take this moment to lift up every man and woman of God that will serve in your house this oh, yes. morning. Lord, I ask today that you place a special powerful anointing upon them, God. So, Father God, that they may glorify your name in a way, God, hallelujah, that will reach lives. Let everything that is done in this place today bring glory to you, God. Cause your servants to be keen to the Spirit, God. Let there be a oneness in the name of Jesus with you, Father. God, we draw now unto you. We connect our hearts to you, Lord. I pray today in every servant's heart today that you would remove every hindering spirit, every hindering thoughts, every hindering way that we may serve with purity of heart, God. Make us holy in every way, Father God, that we may bring glory to your name, God. Oh, Father God, clean these vessels today as they serve in your house. Sanctify them through the sanctified work of your spirit today, Lord. We have come to glorify you and we come to serve in your house today, God. Oh, Lord, I pray that the anointing would rest mighty upon the usher. I pray the anointing would rest mighty upon the praise team, God. Lord, I pray the anointing would rest heavy and mighty upon the musicians as they play for the glorifying of your name. Let your anointing reign and rest mighty upon me as I deliver the word today, God. Let everything that is done in this place, God, bring you glory. So we yield to you today that you may flow through us. But God, we don't want to stop there for those that are serving in your house. But for the worshipers that have come to worship this morning, give them an experience with you, Father, that will be life-changing. Build them up, edify them, strengthen them, Father God. Make them over if you must, God. Do whatever you need to do in your people. For we understand the 911 of this season, God. The time is drawing, God. Strengthen and build up the body of Christ today, Lord. Body, with boldness, with wisdom, with holiness, with purity, with strength, with encouragement. Feel the body of Christ up in faith. Let their faith become the faith of giants in the name of Jesus. Raise up men and women of God in this kingdom that will take over for your glory, God, who will go out and preach and teach and lay hands and do your will in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Who have a heavenly perspective, God. Hallelujah. Who will come up in eternity with you, Father, and understand their earthly assignment, and that is to be for the praise and splendor of your glory. In the name of Jesus, God, we just want you to take over this service, this morning. God, we need you, God. We are desperate for you. We don't want to hear from a man. We don't want to hear from flesh this morning. God, we need you today, God. We need you like we never need you. Lord, we need you, oh God. Oh. oh God, you get out of the way this morning. Let your agenda be fulfilled. Let your agenda be done in this place. Let your agenda be accomplished in this room today. In Jesus' name. And we will be careful to give you the glory. We will give you the praise. We will worship you, our God. We will serve you. Unhindered, unrestrained, unrestricted. We will give you the glory that is due your perfect and beautiful and matchless name. Oh God, smile upon the music in this house. Be pleased, oh God.
love you, Lord. Mm. You are my strength. Yes. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my savior. Yes, God is my rock, yes. whom I find protection. Yes. He is my shield, yes. the power that saves me, and my place of safety. Amen. Yes. Verse 30. Jesus. Jesus. God's way is perfect. Come on. All the Lord's promises He is a shield oh. for all who look to him for protection. 31. For who is God except the Lord? Mm. Who but our God is a solid rock? In verse 46, the Lord lives. Praise to my rock. Yes. <laughs> God, my salvation, be exalted. Yes. Amen. 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 Today we take this moment and time to say something. I want to release this before she comes and gives God praise. We thank the Lord today for the women that got together and made this moment very special to celebrate the birthday of First Lady. We appreciate her.
be jumping for joy at this giving the Lord just because you have the activity of your way up. Yes. 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 Yes.
leave room for you to speak how you want to. We leave room, we make room, oh God, for you to do whatever you want to do this morning. Father, it is your way, it is your will. Father, we just want to line up with it this morning, oh God. Father, speak however you choose to. Oh God, we lift up the man of God before you right now.
It brings joy when you have no idea. When you have no idea. When she runs up to you and gives you that little snub, you know what She has no idea. Oh, yeah. She has no idea.
Thank you so much for joining us. Pray that this word will bless your hearts. Mm. Hallelujah. Mama. I'm not the type of preacher that looks for the deepest thing to preach for the season. Come on. I believe that whatever comes out of the mouth of God is yeah. enough. And when the Lord began to give me this word, I was like, okay, God, I'm amazed. But what seems like something I've heard before, when God speaks it in his time and in his season, it's right on time. I am not one to dismiss the voice of God because I feel like maybe I have a word that's better. Come on. Come on. That would be very foolish of me. Right. Whatever God speaks is needed at that time. God knows what we need. God knows because he sees. It's amazing when you look at the seven churches in Revelations. I guarantee you not one of those churches ever looked at how off they were. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Right. Right, As a matter right. of fact, glory to God, they did not really understand <laughs> how right. often they were that's until right. the messenger came. That's with right. The message. Come on, yeah. man. That's it. That's and it. when Jesus gave them the report card, Come on, that's that's right. Right. then they could really see the areas of their lives that they needed to perfect. Hallelujah. In order to be bettered. Can you imagine, glory to God, the church of Thyatira, the church of Sardis, the church of Sardis, thinking that they really are the it church, and God comes along and says, you're not really the it church. Right. This is what I have against you. Wow. And when I listen to God speak in that way, it's always encouraging to me. I don't know why people, when they look and they see God evaluating them, but they see that as some kind of negative glory. Right, right. But I look at it as God. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. Enough right. to give me what That's I it. need for my right. Yes. That's right. That's right. Years ago, I came to a little town called Weatherford, Texas. That I was, I come from the country, uh, from East Texas, uh, by way of Fort Worth, Texas. What a dramatic change. And in the country, we ran barefoot. And we ran on red hot sand. And we could run really fast. Our bodies were kind of developed. Our calves and our thighs were huge because all we did was drink well water and eat fresh fruits and vegetables all day long. Fresh uh, uh, eggs, right? Fresh as soon as they came out, we ate the eggs. And so it was easy in the country. We kind of had a jungle mentality. And I came to Weatherford, Texas, and I was still stuck in a Palestine mentality. And I got on the track because I loved running and racing. And every time I would run in Weatherford, I would take my shoes off. Yeah, yeah. And the coaches said, boy, you were fast. But they were like, why do you have to take your shoes off? Right. And I said, this is the only way I know how to run. Right, right. If you want me to win these races, yeah. you better let me stay barefoot. Right. And so as I got up through high school, I still had this mentality to run barefoot. And my coach told me, you need to put on some cleats in order to run. And I'm like, no, I can't run in those. And I tried to run, and I got beat. He said, well, take them off just so I can see just exactly what's going on. And he took them off, and I ran and beat everybody. And, and the lesson in that was he told me and taught me how to run with the same speed in the track shoe. And what he did was he gave me a lighter track shoe yeah. with the lighter spikes on it yeah. to train me how to run. Now, at first, I did not like coach. If he's watching Coach Arnell, sometimes he tunes in. <laughs> Weatherford, Texas. Yeah, still yeah. one of my favorite coaches yeah. to this day. Coach Jim Darnell. Yeah. And he taught me and trained me how to run fast in something that I really wasn't comfortable with. Come on. At, at first I had the attitude, but I noticed he said, you cannot run on the track in an official track made barefoot. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm going to have to go against your attitude right. and yeah. force you to uh -oh. stay in these shoes Come on, so that you can get us a medal. My, my, my. And yeah. lo and behold, glory to God, we won the district yeah. that year. Hallelujah, our relay team, we run the district. But he trained me against my attitude. And yeah. Sometimes I told him, so I'm like, you know, come back and run, and I just stayed on the stands. Yeah. And he said, Carl, get your ass. 
show, I can't tell you what he said. <laughs> out here. And they would have to track me down. But again, so even though I had an attitude, he kept pushing me. I pushed him. Yeah. Push yeah. Then he had enough nerves to tie a parachute on my back. Come on, man. <laughs> and I'm like, you gotta be crazy. And I was mad because I'm saying, he's slowing me down. He said, no one's making me fast. Yeah. 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 And I began to run and run. And when he took the parachute off, I began to run faster yeah. than the beats because he trained me with resistance. Yeah, that's it. That's right. Teach today, sir. God trains you with resistance. Yeah. I love the fact of how he speaks to us. And when we look at, oh my God, it's bad. Saying this, or God is saying this, or Sushan is always saying, clean us up, blah 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 blah. Oh, that sounds so doom and gloom. No, it is, it's good because God is training you with resistance in the areas that you need to be perfected in for your betterment, for His glory, so that He may get more out of you. It's not bad. So, with that being said, the Lord has given us a word this morning. My Lord. It's found in James chapter 1. While you're turning there, I want to take this moment to thank the man, y'all, an amazing man. Yes. God bless you all. Y'all have blessed me this morning. Yes, the is. gift that's on y'all's lives is amazing. Thank yes. you so much. Yes. James chapter 1. And this morning, I'm only going to read just a couple of verses, starting in verse 21. James chapter 1, verse 21 and 22. The Bible says, Wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness or wickedness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to to save your souls. Yes. Oh God. Oh God. Yes. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. There it is. Deceiving mm. your own selves. Mm. Mm. That's good. Mm. The whole thing is good, yes, but I'm stopping. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. Yeah. Today for something I want to speak from, it's in your performance. Come on. Help us. It's in your performance. Oh God, help us with this. Yes. It's in your performance. He says, be doers of the word and not hearers only. Mm, good. Hallelujah. Come on. Don't just merely hmm. hear the word, but do the word. Yeah. Yeah. And so today I'm going to deal with how well do you do the word? Wow, come on, come on. How well do you perform the word? If God gave me this man, I was laid out all day yesterday. <laughs> it's one thing for us to speak the word, and we're very good at that, but yeah. how well do you do, do it? it? Mm. How well do you perform it? Mm. Good. What is your performance of the word? The word of God is so unique because it's filled with wisdom. Yes. It's filled with knowledge. You just heard that the engrafted word is able to save your soul. Yes, it is. The word of God has power to save your soul. Yes. When it is received. That's right. The word of God. It's amazing, when we were coming up, we learned how to do this and that from what we saw in our environments, what we heard other people say, or our parents, what they taught us. And some of those things we put into practice, some of those things we didn't. We learned from our uncles, we learned from our aunties, we learned from just observation. Mm -hmm. And out of some of the things that we learned, we actually performed those things. And in performing those things, got us some pretty bad stuff. Mm. The performance, I want you to understand this definition for performance. And, and this is amazing. Anytime you hear the word performance, I want you to think of these definitions. It is the act of doing something. Huh. Anytime something is performed, it is number one, the act of doing something. Mm -hmm. Performance, the act of doing something. Number two, it is the execution of an action. Execute. How well is your execution? Mm -hmm. I know that you may
may have an ear full of the word, but do you have a heart full of the word? Yeah. Mm. How well do you execute this action? Oh so the execution of an action, something accomplished. I love that. So the execution of an action, something accomplished. Write this down. The process of carrying out or accomplishing a function or task. When we deal with performance, how well do you perform the word? It is a process of carrying out or accomplishing a function or task. How well is the performance of the word of God in your life? Mm -hmm. I'm going to teach you this morning how to get victory. Hmm. How well is the performance of the word of God in your life? Hmm. It's very easy to look the part. Right. But what is the reality That's of it. in your life? That's it. That's it. Good. When you make a mistake and you fall, do you use the word to get back up? Mm. Do you perform it? When your flesh is agitated and wants to go contrary, do you perform the word? Mom. As a matter of fact, do we do what the word says even when it comes to making decisions? Right. <laughs> Since I've gained the knowledge from the word of God, every house I lived in has been divinely led by God. Yeah. Yeah. Where I go, where I live, yeah. God said go there. I went. Yeah. Right. One time God told me to go to Wales, and I was so mad. <laughs> I want to go to Wales. Right, right. When I live in Arlington, six lads. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was an emotion. Mm -hmm. Didn't realize when I got to Weatherford, there were people there that I was going to meet that was going to be a part of this ministry right. even to this day. Right. Well, what would have happened had I not obeyed the Lord's That's it. That's it. Right. That's it. That's it. But it comes to what you do in your life. How much consideration do you put into what God has to do? That's it. Come on, yeah. Good question. Isn't it amazing? It's easy for us to talk, mm. hallelujah, and say and declare and quote. Mm -hmm. But where is your performance? That's it. Good. See, the world wants to see you perform the That's word, it. not just <laughs> say it. People on your job are looking at the, your performance. Yes, right. Your family members are looking yes. at your performance. Yes, on, that's now. right. Okay, you say you're a God, but you made a stupid decision. <laughs> God, <laughs> God, 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 wow. God. Mm. Right. That has nothing to do with God. Mm. Uh -huh. right. right. Wow. Let me make it practical for 2022. Mm -hmm. Come on. You said God gave me the car, not a car that got repossessed. Come on, Pastor. Pay us was eight hundred and fifty dollars a month for a Fiat, or for a Ford Taurus, or for this, or for a Pinto, or for some little car at, at MCMC. Yeah. Car smoking and blazing all over the place, <laughs> leaking all over the highway. But God told me to get it. Yeah. yeah. Come on, Pastor. Did you say, Lord God, Lord, what's your direction? The field that you have for me, or the, the place that you want me to be? Or did you just say, I got a bright idea? Let me just go get this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right idea. How much of the acknowledgement of God did you actually walk in? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Trust it. in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not unto thy own understanding. It. In all of thy ways acknowledge Him, and He will, will direct thee. Yeah. Yes, He will. I don't know about y'all, but I don't like being a bunch of snakes. Right. I don't like, come I'm on. sorry. I'm, come, come on. on. I'm, I'm, That's I'm half it. a century old. I've already been through so many right. bad decisions. That's it. coming up. Right. That's it. Come on and talk today. Come on. Amen. It's too costly. That's right. I remember years ago when cell phones first came out, I went to Radio Shack. They were selling the cell phones for one dollar. Oh wow. I bought a Radio Shack cell phone and yeah. I thought that was the baddest thing in Fort Worth and Weatherford because I walked around with this bad phone. I was sitting there at Christmas family meetings talking on the phone. Just calling just pulling my phone out of the bag. Just I feel like James Bond. Wow. Walking around with a cell phone, just talking. Just and the first thing was $980. So <laughs> what? That stayed on my credit for seven years. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
don't think about a thing called beepers. We had a thing called beepers. And yeah. people would yeah. beep. Yeah. Other people had to go to pay phone. Mine would yeah. beep. I was just doing the phone. So what's going on? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm telling you, sir. And then I have to go right back down to that beeper because of my foolishness. Right. So think about asking God to get a cell phone. Half a century old. Yeah. And a ton of mistakes. Come on here. 
Hallelujah. The Lord, God said, write a book. That's it. So you got something to say. I yes, told you so. Yes, Lord. Right. A whole lot. Right. My God. Right. How much of the performance of the word of God do you really walk in? Right, right. Is there truly a performance of the word mm. that will cause people to take notice and note? Yeah, that's it. That God is really truly operating in your life. What do people see? What do people see? Come on. All right. Can, can, can yeah. I do a song for you about it? Come on, Pastor. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh, watch out. <laughs> Go ahead, Pastor. Go ahead. Watch out. Can, can, can I have my man come up with me? Watch your help, Pastor. Can I have my man come up with me? <laughs> can, can somebody summon call Junior for me, please? Can I have my man? Y'all are mine, right? Uh -huh. I've been dying to wear this little thing. Go ahead, Pastor. Can, can y'all can y'all enjoy this whole song with me here or something? Yes, yeah, yeah, we'll stand and be fine, yes. Could you bring that up here for me, please? <laughs> Thank y'all so much for allowing me to be able to debut my wonderful acoustic guitar practice. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much, band, for standing with me. We can be in, uh, we're going to C sharp. We're going to C sharp. Thank you so much. You got the note. <laughs> Thank y'all so much. I've been dying to play this. Mm. It's um, keeps a good time. Um, this is a wonderful good time that I purchased a long time ago that I've been waiting for. And uh, Daniel was supposed to play for me a couple last week. <laughs> Something happened, but uh, uh, here comes my keyboard player. So uh, we're going to be in C sharp. Uh, so. So glad I get to debut this this plan before you all today. We're just gonna be a C sharp zero zero. Thank you, Van, for just being so 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 faithful. Carl Jr. I really hope it was a hundred cent zero zero on the transpose there. So let me see. Um, Eyes haven't seen. Is heaven heard? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Let me be honest with you. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I can't give y'all a performance because I don't know how to play this. <laughs> right? Oh, hey, dude, yeah. come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ben. I've let the band come up and they fatly came from outside. <laughs> My brother has moved from his comfort zone. Dee Dee has come and got his sticks. And everybody has ready. done all of this for somebody that only looks apart and oh. is not the reality. Come on. <laughs> oh, I have the good talk. I look like yeah. I can play. And if you were to see me, you would assume and think that I really can play because of what it looks like. Oh. Mm. But the reality is, is I even though I purchased this, I never trained myself to study it, Come on. to learn how to play it. I only have it in my possession, That's so it. I look the part. Yeah. But the reality is, I cannot give you a performance. Come on, mm. come on. Had I taken time to learn and study and to play this thing, I could have given you a performance that could have blessed your soul. Right. That wrote a beautiful song that could have lifted your spirit, but because I only carry it around for oh, looks God. and never took time to study oh, it, on. there is no performance. That's right. Come on. Oh. I inconvenience all of these people. Yeah. Got you ready. Move them out of their position because they had an expectation because of what they could see. Come on. Mm. That's good. Oh, but they could not benefit from it. Nothing. Mm. Thank you, man. Nothing, my God. Wow. And when I stop and when I look at this, Jeez. it's interesting that I've had this guitar for years. Yeah, long time. Yeah. And I've had many times to study it. And many times I've tried to study it, but I allowed the world to get in the way. Right. Too easy. Right. 
good. If you're a very unstable person all over the place, you want to be stable? Hmm. The Lord. Yes, the Lord, yes, Lord yes. makes you stable because yes, it keeps you rooted in one place of truth. Yes, it is. That's it. Yes, it does. That's it. Come on. Watch this. Second Kings chapter 3. I, I'm going to give you a quick synopsis of the story really quickly so that you can understand what's going on. Uh, the King Ahab's son, Jehoram, is upset because the king of Moab decides that he's no longer going to give him tribute of 1,000 wool and 1,000 rams, no longer a wool and rams wool. So he's no longer going to do that. And so because of that, he's no longer giving tribute because now Ahab is dead. Je 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 Jehoram is reigning. And because now Jehoram is reigning, the king of Moab decides he's going to rebel. And I'm no longer going to give him tribute. Right. And so because of that, uh, Jehoram goes out and he gets, hallelujah, uh, two other kings. And he begins to ask Jehoshaphat, who is the king of Judah. And hallelujah, he gets the king of Edom, and they come together, and they say, we three kings are going to go together and fight against Moab since he's rebelled. And they decided to join him in this fight. But then as they're on their way, there's something unique happens that I want to bring your attention to this morning. <laughs> hallelujah. Something very strange takes place. Now, they're preparing to go into battle, into war, and you would think that they would be well equipped, but something happens. And for the sake of time, let's go down to verse 9. 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 9. And the Bible says, so the king of Israel went, and the king of Judah, and the king of Edom. Mm. And they fetched a compass of seven days' journey, and there was no water for the host. And for the cattle that followed them. So they have no water. Right. Which is a very dangerous situation when you're going back to war. That means that they, they can grow fatigue and die. Right. So this is a very serious situation by them not having water. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says in verse 10, 10. And the king of Israel said, Alas, that the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord, that we may inquire of the Lord by him? And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, Here is Elisha, the son of Shaphat, which poured water on the hand of Elijah. And Jehoshaphat said, The word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And Elisha said unto the king of Israel, What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father and to the prophets of thy mother. His mother was Jezebel. And the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, for the Lord hath called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, As the Lord of hosts liveth before whom I stand, surely were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee nor see thee. You better thank God Jehoshaphat was right. there because if he wasn't there, I wouldn't even right. give you any attention. Right, right, right. Verse 15, But now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, Make this valley full of ditches. Catch this sense. And he said, Thus saith the Lord. Notice Elisha is only the messenger of God telling them right. what God said. Right. Right. Uh, right. He says, Thus saith the Lord. Too many times we look at that man and we get mad because of what men say. But here we understand that he is just the messenger right. of what the Lord is actually saying. Right. Yeah. So he says, here, check this out. This is what the Lord says. Make this valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, ye shall not see wind, neither shall ye see rain. Yet that valley shall be filled with water that ye may drink both ye and your cattle and your beast. And this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. I love this. And ye shall smite every fenced city 
and every choice city and shall feed every good tree and stop all wells of water and mark every good piece of land with stones. Now watch this. I wonder did God fulfill what he said. In verse 3, the Bible says, And it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered, hmm, that behold, there came water by the way of Edom, and the country was filled with water. Yeah. Come on, come on. Filled. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I want to encourage you with this because anytime you start to perform the word, God will always bring an answer. Yes. Yes. Anytime there is a performance, there will be a manifestation. The instructions were to these men, I need you to get in these men's mind. The instructions were, make this valley full of ditches. You are not going to see wind nor rain. But this valley will be full of water. Interesting. So that means I'm out here digging ditches. With no tangible evidence of what you say. Come on, no way. Right. Come on, Pastor. I need you to grab this. Yes. Because see, this is how powerful the word of God is. Yes. yes. God said, I'm going to bring water into this region. Yes. So what I need you to do is start digging the ditch. Hallelujah. To be able to contain the water that I'm about to yes. send. The thing that you've been asking for. And it's going to sustain your yes. hosts. Yeah. So these men had to dig and they had to dig trenches and to prepare for something based on the word with no natural evidence. Come on, come on. I can see if he said it and it was cloudy outside. <laughs> yeah. I can see if he said it and I smell a little rain coming. Yeah. I can see if he said it and there was a lake nearby. Then maybe he's gonna make the lake hot over on this side, but he's saying something that does not have any yeah. natural support. Nothing. I need y'all to understand how bad God yeah. is. Mm. Yeah. I can tell y'all how many supernatural yeah. things have happened to me even in the past couple of hours. Mm. Even over my life, some stuff will blow your mind. Yeah. It just happened when I was in the back. Don't tell me God is not real. Yeah. Mm. Come on. Right. You perform the word and then God brings the manifestation. So these things started digging. That means they started to perform the word. They started to take an action to yeah. execute. What God said. Right. And when they started to execute what God said, then God came oh. in with the manifestation. Oh. 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 Now you see how the enemy talks you out of the performing oh. of the word. Oh. He doesn't want you just hearing the word. He doesn't <laughs> want you to perform the word. Because when you perform the word, that's when you get the God results. Yeah. That's it. When you perform the word and do the word outside of your feelings, yeah. that's when God brings his supernatural
Faith makes you execute. Yes, it does. And you're not even bothered by the current circumstances. Oh, I'm not. Come on. Oh, Faith makes you praise and, and you don't even care about the current conditions. Faith makes you worship and you don't even care because you know what God said. Faith will keep you in a place of peace and everything around you can be collapsing. But when God gives you a word, you won't even be moved by what it feels. Everything around you can be going crazy and you can look around and tell your wife, that's what's wrong with life. Because God said it. That's it. Hallelujah. That's it. My, 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 my. We've moved from this place of faith and confidence, and we've allowed everything else to creep into our hearts. So now we don't see the manifestation. Right, right. Well, at least not the godly manifestation. Right. Because to everything that you perform, there will be a manifestation. Right. It may not be a godly manifestation. If you perform out of the voice of your flesh, there will be a manifestation, but it will not be a manifestation for your good. Which leads me to another point that I need to make real quick. It's amazing because we glory to God are performing things. We're just not performing the word. We're performing out of our flesh. Out of the voices of our dysfunction. Or out of the impulses of our hearts and our minds. So we perform and act on those things. But they are not bringing the fruits that will bless your life. Come on, come on now. There will always be a performance. There will always be something that you are operating out of. God always brought the manifestation yes, of what he promised. Yes, he what then? Oh. Hallelujah. Mm. Why and why and why don't we see more people doing the word? Come on. Come on. Can I give you this quick teaching and we're out of here? Help. If a word is so sure and so powerful and so mighty and so strong, you would think everybody would be doing it. Right. Come on now. Because of course everybody wants the best. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. My. Wow. I found out that when you're operating out of the performance of your flesh, you get the worst. Yeah, yeah, you do. When you're it. operating out of the performance That's of it. the love of God, when yeah. God speaks and when God reveals, mm -hmm. you get the best. Yeah, right. <laughs> wow. Why then don't most people mm -hmm. do the word? Mm -hmm. Why don't you see this amazing? Overflow of performance coming from mm -hmm. the people of God. Mm -hmm. You will be surprised at what the Lord told me. Mm -hmm. I wrote it down because mm -hmm. I need you to really grab a hold of this because this really mm -hmm. shocked me when I heard. Wow. Here it is. There is no longer a faith in God. Yes, now every man lives for faith in themselves. Yes, yeah, right. There is absolutely no faith in God, and now only people only live for themselves. For themselves. For themselves. Why is everything going so wrong? How much of yourself have you been operating on? <laughs> Why aren't I growing? Maybe it's the church. Ain't nothing wrong with this church. This right. is the number one church, and this is true. Come on, here. <laughs> yes, indeed. Come on. No. Mm -hmm. No. Nah. How much of yourself are you living in? Mm. Mm. When there is no longer a faith in God and now the faith is in me. Mm. Uh. I then, without realizing it, become a God to myself. Right. Yes, there it is. Because I only answer to my impulses. There it is. Mm. And because of that, now my life suffers spiritually. Because after all, why would God impart more into you when you cannot be trusted? Yes. And the worst thing in the world that can ever happen to you is for you to be given over to yourself. Yeah. 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 Because the moment that God turns you and allows you just to operate on the mode of you, uh, you're going to destroy yourself and everything else around you. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, effective. Mm. and so it's this thing that we have, this whole mechanism inside that, that, of the flesh that, that, that tempts us constantly to just operate on just self mode. Yeah. Come if on. I want to do it, if I feel it, if I feel it, if I want to do it, I like this. I'm going to control my own happiness. I'm tired of being happy. Let me find a way to be happy. So let me do this, let me do this. Let me go here, let me go there. Without ever considering God. And so now I'm living in the mode of me. And my faith and reliance and dependence is on me. And that is called biblically. 
That's oh, it. Yes, that's it. Right? Why are I growing? Hmm. I'm going to show you in just a minute. Hold on tight. So we see that there is something going on now in the body of Christ where there is no longer a faith in God for mm, you. Right. Come on, you got to look within yourself. Right. Right. These men had faith in God and they believed in His power. They simply believed. Without faith in God, it is impossible to please. Yes, that's right. Yes, impossible. Yes, right. You impossible. cannot. Word. My God. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Come on. Impossible. Come on. <laughs> You can tell that there is no faith in God because now you live stressed. Right. That's it. No That's peace. it. Yeah. That's it. When there's faith in God, it's like, you got it. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come right. Come on. Come on. Rest. Come on. When there's faith in God, for real, I trust in you. Yes. Mm. That's number one. Mm -hmm. Number two. This is the big one. Why don't you see many people doing the word of God. If it works, if it's so powerful, if it's a sure, sure win, why don't you see people performing the word? Mm -hmm. Number two, they're unwilling to live sacrificially. Uh, good. Unwilling to live sacrificially. Give me five minutes to teach you. I'm going to let you go home. Make your time, Pastor. That they're unwilling to live sacrificially. We're now in a time now, do you not know that people like to pick and choose their sacrifice? Yes, yeah, real. Sacrificing doesn't mean you burn yourself up. But sacrificing, what it means is that you give up yourself for the greater. That's right. Come mm on -hmm. now. You give up yourself for someone greater. And even though that sounds good in this wonderful, holy, spiritual charged atmosphere, right. most people never do it. Right. No, I want what I want, whatever. Right, right. Real. God says give it up. But they wonder why there is no maturity. Right. Because many are unwilling to be mm -hmm. sacrificed. Right. That's right. That word sacrifice today sounds like a curse word. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 12 lets us know I beseech you, brother, therefore, in the mercy of God, that uh. you present your bodies as a living sacrifice for yeah. yeah. and accept the love to God, for this is your reasonable service. Mm -hmm. I want you to grab a hold of this because this is one of the big ones. You can tell when there is no love for God because you stop sacrificing. Right. <laughs> right. You don't see the value in the mm -hmm. sacrifice. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to tell you, anything great in God mm -hmm. is going to come with a sacrifice. Yes, yes it will. Yes, it will. The sacrifice is, if God says, I need you to give this up or to lay this down or to do this, and you are wrestling with it. Uh. <laughs> if God says, I need you up at 3 in the morning, 2 in the morning, how did you pray at 6 a.m.? Uh, Come on. If God says, I need you to spend more time with me, sacrifice. Yeah. Come on. I can do this, I can do this, God, don't you know my schedule? Yeah. But people are unwilling to make those sacrifices. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But if God tells you, no, 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 don't even talk to that person right there for a season. Come yeah. On. Come on, baby. Oh, you go. There you go. Come on. Yeah. They don't want to give up. Right, Come right. Because you don't want to give up. Yes. God cannot pour into it. Right. Come on. Chew on that one tonight. Yeah. Right. Let me give you then the formula. Come on. This is the third thing that I want you to grab a hold of in your spirit. Number one, the faith has been removed from God and put into human, to yourself. Number two, there is an unwillingness to live sacrificially. Right. Number three, it's one of my favorites that's very important, and that is weakened by the loss of inward battles. Wow. My, my. Number three, weakened by the loss of inward battles. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's good. That's good, right that's there. Good. Weakened yeah. by the loss of inward yeah. battles. That's real, real. Wow. That's good. Uh, Galatians chapter 5, this is our last text. How about our last scripture, then we're going home. Galatians chapter 5. In this, I'm going to give the problem, and I'm also going to give the antidote. And it's found in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 through 17. Galatians chapter 5. Why don't you see most people performing the word? Why is there a low performance ratio in the body of Christ when it concerns the word? Wow. Why don't you see? My. 
Hmm. And I'm sure there are many others, but I'm giving you what God is giving me. Yeah. Watch this. 5 and verse 16 and 17. The Bible says this. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Uh. Verse 16, he says, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the yeah. lust of the flesh. Yeah. For the flesh lusted against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And these are contrary. Mm. The one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Uh, come on now. Good. Because you lose inward battles in your mind. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Wow. You cannot do what you struggle to do. Some theologians say that this is not written, that word cannot is not written in the original text. But it says so that you will not be able to do or you cannot do what you will. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in any case, the scriptures is very clear that there is obviously a war going on. Right, right, right. And when you don't know how to deal with the inward war on the inside of yeah. you to win and to overcome, you will always lose and find yourself not performing yeah. the word. That's it. Hallelujah. That's Lord. right. See, whenever you have been regenerated or born again, you now have the Spirit of God now in your hearts. Now the Holy Spirit, he has a principle of going this direction, but the flesh has this side that wants to go this direction, so they're constantly at war with yeah, one another. Right. See, we don't talk about the struggle in the church because right. we don't want anybody to think that they're just so alone. But you can speak in tongue right now and your flesh can Come. meet you when you get outside Come of the door in the next 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. we yeah. really yeah. right. Because yeah. that is the Adam side of you. Yeah. And when the Holy Spirit comes, there is a power to overcome that Adam side of you, but there is still something that you must contend with in this struggle. Yeah. You must fight against this thing, the yeah. flesh, or this mind of the flesh. That's right. That's, That's it. Real. That's real right there. The Holy Spirit has this, his inclinations, he's, they, he's inclining you to go this direction, he's yeah. inclining you to do love, he's inclining yeah. you to forgive, he's inclining you, hallelujah, to seek the presence of God, he's inclining you to spend time in worship, but the flesh wants to go to sleep, Right. Come on, and right. the flesh wants to eat, yeah. and the flesh wants to go have a good time, yeah. Come on, yeah. 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 constantly in conflict, yeah. good, and when you don't know how to win those battles, hallelujah, between the spirit and the flesh, right. then what's going to happen is you're going to find yourself in a place of insanity in your head, and you'll find yourself struggling to do what you really want to do. Right. That's good. Come on. Come on. So we know what the problem is. The problem is, is this inward battle. Yes, it is. And it's amazing, the word of God, that when you start to lose inward battles, it will show up outwardly. Yes, it will. When you lose yes, those inward yes, battles, yes. hallelujah, it will manifest itself outwardly. Yes, yep. Oh, this is good. I'm going to watch this myself. Come on. Come on. <laughs> yes, indeed. So the problem is this. Hallelujah. The Spirit says, I want you to live for me. Because when the Holy Spirit comes upon your heart, he starts to empower you. Yes. But now you can ignore the Holy Spirit's leading and override the Holy Spirit to do what you want. Huh. That's right. You know when the Holy Spirit is there. That's I believe right. you're about to step into something and you feel that warning. Oh, I don't think I need to do that. Mm -hmm. Somebody always say, well, my first mind told me. That's like the first time. Right. <laughs> That's what old people used to say. Right. Yeah. But when the Holy Spirit has come upon your heart, yeah. he starts to influence you. Yeah. And he allows you to know, to give you time to know that this is not the best way. This is what he calls you. Right. But then the flesh says, yeah, but I want this. Mm -hmm. Come on, Pastor. Because I want this. I want to experience this. I want to do this. And now the question is, who will you side with? Right. You have a decision. For instance, the Holy Spirit wants you to stay in joy. But here comes another spirit trying to say, no, you need to be depressed. Look how bad your life is. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's that coming from? Right, 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 right. But the Holy Spirit is like, no, no, no. I want you to believe my word. I want you to believe that what, what God said. And the Holy Spirit starts kicking out scriptures and bringing things to your yeah. deliverance to keep you up. But the flesh is like, no, that's not it. That's, I don't feel that. That's not it. I still got this going on. And the Holy Spirit is trying to keep you up in faith yeah. to get you to look it higher so that you can stay up. But then here comes this other voice of this flesh that's trying to talk you down so that you will get depressed and ruin your day. Yeah. Come on, Pastor, that's yeah. real. So now there is a battle that's going on on the inside, and we don't like talking about this battle. And young people, you need to know, even pastor, even first 
Sister Katie, even Sister Keisha, even Sister Angela, even Sister Sean, even Sister Shaw. Everybody in this room struggles with something. Yeah. That's right. Do you not know that you cannot 
be a Christian. Hallelujah. Try to walk out the things of God without the Spirit's power. It's good. It's good. It's real. You were meant to run on the life of God. Yes. You were meant to truly run on the life of God. And I think the problem is, is that most people have convinced themselves that they have the Spirit. Right. But in reality, they do not right. have His Spirit. Right. Now, 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 please don't get me wrong. Come don't on, believe God. all this television stuff. The Holy Spirit jumping and all this old mess and ta 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 whatever. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Pastor. Whatever. <laughs> whatever. All that mysticism and spooky stuff. Ta 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 ta. You know you have the Holy Spirit. Well, you'll notice your desires change for God. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But there is more love for God. That's right. <laughs> you are no glory to God because certain things that you used to do, you don't want to do them anymore. And it wasn't a decision that you just made out of your will. <laughs> that was a real heart change on the inside. That's right. That's right. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That's right. So when you walk in the Spirit, that's another teaching. But when you walk in the Spirit, it means that you are under the influence that's of the it. Spirit. So number one, you must have the Holy Spirit. Yes. But when you walk by the Spirit, it means that you live your life under the influence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. Right, right. When you walk in the Holy Spirit, it means glory to God, how the Holy Spirit lives in you. And because of that, you pattern your life after the influence of the Spirit. That's right, that's mm. right. Come on. Woo. Walking in the Spirit also denotes reliance upon Him. Yeah. When you're walking in the Spirit, it means that, glory to God, that there is a reliance on Him and His ability, not me. Good. When you're walking in the Spirit, hallelujah, it means that you have a God consciousness. Yes, that's it. Yes, it There's is. a God consciousness. Your friend said, hey, y'all, come on, let's go, let's go, let's, let's, let's go smoke and drink some stuff. Come on, let's go out and get some girls, let's go do some stuff. And then God comes to me, like, mm, I ain't doing that, that's not my life. Right. I ain't doing that. Right. Right. Y'all move it. Mm -hmm. Don't override it. Come on. Hey, come on, let's go to this club. Man, they ain't got to have no drink, just drive us. Go hang out. Mm -hmm. Come on. No, God. Mm. Holy Spirit, that God comes to me. Set up. Y'all can have that. I'm into something else. Yeah. Right. So you spend your time giving yourself over to God. There's a God consciousness about everything that you do. Yeah. Even young women, you walk in and look good. I know we have a lot of beautiful young single women here in this ministry. God bless you all so much. Hallelujah. You have to place a car wash and somebody. <laughs> you look good. You got a man. Instead of you and your loneliness being weak. Come on. Well, God consciousness, you can see the devil in him. That's right. Come on. That's God bless you. Even if I have to leave this car wash order, you can walk to you. My mind is more focused on the things of God because whenever it's something that God has for me, God will let me know. That's it. I need you to get this. We're closing. Come on, Pastor. That's good. I need you to understand this. It's a God consciousness. The mind of God. Your mind is on the things of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Walking in the spirits, it denotes this, this reliance upon him. And, and you do, you live under that influence. So when you walk, it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. See, you can't keep going in and out of the two different lifestyles. That's right. That's right. It's costly. Yeah. When the Holy Spirit has touched your heart, and you felt that touch of God on you, you know what time you in church, and you just felt that weeping like something was going on yeah. you, that's God already did you. That's yeah. God already yeah. did you. That's it. Because if God wasn't in your heart, you wouldn't feel those moments. Right. Yeah. Mm. That's right. It, it, it's not even an emotionalism thing. An emotionalism thing, glory to God, has to do with, oh, I just feel because the music sounds good. Right. 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 Yeah. right. But I believe in the same way that I can. Right. 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 But whenever there's a real touch from God, there was a closeness that, that I want to give up yeah. my life. You ever notice when God really touched your heart, you want to give up everything you know yeah. that's not like him. Yeah. That's because the Spirit of God is on the inside of you. Yeah. And that's a sign right there because I'm going to give all this up yeah. to you, God. That means God has touched you, but you can't go back to the that's same it. way. Right. That's, that's it. Good. That's good. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Come on, Pastor. Come on now. And people have made this thing about jerking and popping and fake tongues. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> right. Wow. Right. Nothing to do with Nothing. The Holy Nothing at all. When people smoke in a whole lot of tongues, when they got filled in the days in the New Testament, go back and look at the reasons why they all right. smoke in tongues. Mm -hmm. One well, was to be witnesses to yes, the other Jews right. fellows in the region. The other tongues, they heard their language, they're glorifying God in their languages. Then the other was proof, go 
glory to God. Hallelujah. They went, hallelujah, hallelujah. And this was proof, glory to God, during this time that, that Peter went to minister. It was proof yes. in Cornelius' house that the Gentiles, the Holy Spirit, was now made available to the Gentiles. That's so that right. was proof then to the Jews yeah. that they had been filled with the Spirit. That's it. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Let's learn the That's truth. it. Teach Come it. On. Say that. Come on. Teach it. That's it. Teach it. Come on. It's good. These were manifestations of yes. evidences. That's, That's right. right. Come on. In closing, saints, mm. if we walk in the Spirit, mm -hmm. wow. you will not fulfill That's right. the That's lust right. of the flesh. That's right. Yeah. That's right. When you walk in the spirit, uh -huh. now you have the empowerment now to perform uh -huh. God's word. Uh -huh. That's right. That's right. To do God's word, to execute his word. Yeah. And when you execute his word, you will start to see more of the manifestation of God in your life. You will see more righteousness. Yeah. You will see more wisdom. You will get more leadings. You will have more discernment. You will find more peace. Yeah. You will feel more joy. The world will start to lose all of its value. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's right. Where you live, where you dress, what you eat, blah, 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 all this world is up. We're not even need any concerns anymore. Y'all don't even understand it. But if you want to read the Bible, everything that you see now is going to be burned up one day. Right. Okay. Right. Go to the precious car. Don't be out there when it happens. Go to the car. <laughs> it's burned up. I still have more payments on it. Oh, well, it's burned up. It's gone. Right. The house that you put so much value in, it's going to be burned up.
Jesus, I need